Gege Akutami kinda sucks at math. Don't take my word for it, look. See, he can barely count. He mixed up the numbers 5 and 50. Why is it then that the coolest power in JJK is super mathematical? If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm talking about Limitless, Gojo's technique. If you clicked on this video, I'm sure you're familiar with it, but on the off chance you aren't, Limitless allows Gojo Satoru to distort and manipulate space. One of the uses of this makes it literally impossible to reach him. But what does that mean? Gege explains this with the story of Achilles and the tortoise. Imagine Achilles racing a tortoise, but the tortoise has a head start. This is one of Zeno's paradoxes, who is an ancient Greek philosopher. He argues that it's impossible for Achilles to reach the tortoise, which sounds stupid, but the reasoning is tricky. First Achilles has to go halfway to the tortoise, then another half of that, then another half, etc. In essence, he has to travel halfway between him and the tortoise an infinite amount of times, so he'll never reach it. But that's kind of stupid, I mean think about it. If that reasoning checked out, then nobody, nothing, could ever move. Which to be fair is what Zeno argued. Motion would be impossible, since you can technically subdivide any distance into infinite parts. First of all, I can move. And second of all, that still doesn't really explain Gojo's technique. Yes, I'm overanalyzing this, but just stick with me here and it'll be worth it. Also, I have a Patreon now, so if you want to support me, click the link in the description. Now, believe it or not, what we're debating here is something that stumped mathematicians for over 2,000 years. This idea of doing an infinite number of tasks in a finite amount of time, like traveling half of a distance infinite times, has a name. A super task. Actually, Vsauce did a video on these a while back. Now, these are paradoxes, but they're like incredibly impractical. Who cares if you tell me that motion is impossible? That's not going to stop me from punching you in the face, or somewhere else. But believe it or not, this whole idea is literally the foundation of calculus. Gojo's power is literally calculus. Here, let's take a simple example. On the x-axis is how similar someone is to Megami, and on the y-axis, the chances of being a bum. A simple linear relationship, I'll call it bum of x. Now let's say that I'm about 53% similar to Megami. Again, I'm not proud, but just looking at the graph, I can pinpoint how likely I am to be a bum. But there's always going to be some inaccuracy in where I put this dot. Now let's say I know I'm within about 5% of 53% similar to Megami. Again, I'm not proud, but then we can draw boundary lines on the x and y axes, so we know how bummy I am lies somewhere in this rectangle. Okay, now let's say Gojo looks at me with his six eyes and he can quantify that I'm exactly 53.245% similar to Megami or something like that. That corresponds to some bum value b. I'm leaving it arbitrary for a reason. Now we can let the horizontal lines hone in arbitrarily close to b. No matter how close they get, we can always squeeze our vertical lines to hone in on 53.245. In calculus, what we can say is that the limit as x approaches 53.245 of bum of x is b. And you can write that in this compact mathematical notation. We say that this is the limit because for some arbitrary margin of accuracy on the bum axis, we'll call the error epsilon, I can always choose some range, we'll call it delta, on the megami axis, such that the difference between our function value bum of x and our value b is within the purple lines. Now, this whole time we've been assuming my bumminess is always directly related to my similarity to potential man. But what if we're wrong? What if that's true for most points, but not our point? Maybe that percentage corresponds to a bumminess index up here then it doesn't really matter how far we zoom in these lines, we'll always be wrong about my bum value. The important thing to note here is that we actually don't care what value b is, what value bum of 53.245 is. It could be a point anywhere along this vertical line. All I care about is what value bum of x approaches as x gets arbitrarily close to 53.245. This is the concept of a limit. So what does this have to do with Gojo's infinity? Well, infinity is kind of just a limit. We can think about Achilles and the tortoise as an infinite sum, one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on. This is a bit clunky to write out, so we have a more compact, if a bit scarier notation. We read this as the sum from one to n of one over two to the power i. All we're doing is plugging in values ranging from 1 up to some arbitrary number n for i, and then adding up all those terms. You can see how these two statements are equivalent. But what if we let n be infinity? Well, that's impossible in the real world, but we have a workaround now. 
instead of actually plugging in infinity, just take the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum. This is the same idea as before. We just want to see what value our sum approaches as n gets larger and larger and larger and approaches infinity. We're not actually plugging in infinity, it's just a clever workaround so we don't have to deal with it. Anyways, you can try to work this out for yourself. If you do this just in a calculator and plug in like a really big number for n, you'll see that the value that it seems to approach is 1, which is what we expect. All that means is that after traveling an infinite halves of a distance, you'll reach the end, which in hindsight seems obvious. So. Everything I've mentioned seems to support our sense of reality. Motion is real. But in the world of fiction and sorcery, <laughs> such logic can be toyed with. We have our preconceived notions about movement and motion, but Gojo being able to distort space messes with this. Here, let's look at the Jujutsu Kaisen wiki. The infinity is the convergence of an immeasurable series. Anything that approaches the infinity slows down and never reaches the user. This is because the technique takes the finite amount of space between the two subjects and divides it an infinite amount of times. Honestly, I think that's kind of word soup. As we mentioned before, you can, theoretically, subdivide any amount of space into infinite pieces, no infinity required. But to be fair, it is a shonen anime or manga. I don't expect the math to be airtight. I'll interpret this as such. If you could approach Gojo for infinite time, he would be the limit. He makes it so that every half subdivision of space takes the same amount of time to traverse. Here, I'll try to visualize this. Going back to the bum graph, I'll replace the axes with time t on the x-axis and position s on the y-axis. This graph now shows a plot of something moving at a constant velocity through space. Now let's say that Gojo exists at a point in space corresponding to this white line. His technique, infinity, has a certain range to it that Gojo can control. So let's say that the boundary is at this gray line. Now, the graph will stay the same before it enters infinity's range, but once it does, the position versus time graph will become an asymptotic function, with Gojo at its asymptote. Essentially, as time goes out to infinity, the graph will approach his line, but will never reach it. Bingo. Gojo is at the limit of this graph as time approaches infinity, but you can never reach him in finite time. So in the end, Gojo is an asymptote, and you learn some math. If you enjoyed that, I have another anime slash math video you can click on the left. And if you want to support these videos I mentioned, I have a Patreon linked in the description and on the channel profile. Bye bye